Hello everyone, welcome once again to ADF step by step tutorials. In the last couple of tutorials on ADF task flow call and return activity, what we saw was how to use task flow call activity to navigate from one task flow to another, and then how to use return activity to return back to the original calling task flow. So the return could be done in two ways. In the first tutorial, we saw where we saw how to return to the original calling task flows, the view which actually invoked it. In the second tutorial, what we saw was, if we want to navigate to some other view from the original task flow, we could do that as well by specifying the navigation through the task flow return activity. In this tutorial, what we are going to see is how to pass a return parameter. Okay. So basically, like a, we will invoke the task flow using task flow call activity and when the task flow returns we are going to return a value and use that value in the original task flow. So going back to our example we have an employee list task flow from the employee list task flow we will be invoking the employee create task flow using the task flow call activity. In the employee create task flow once it is done Basically, when the user clicks on save, we will return a value with the name of the employee who got created. That name will be passed back to this original calling task flow. In this case, it is the employee list task flow and it will be able to display the result like the value that was returned from the employee create task flow. In order to do that, first thing what we need to do is go to the employee create task flow, go to the written value definitions add a return value so here i'm going to say new employee name basically this is going to contain the name of the employee who was created so i'm going to say it as like i'm going to say the class as java.lang.string and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set the value this value i'm going to set it from page flow scope so i'm just going to say page flow scope dot new employee name so what we have to do is we need to ensure that we are populating this value somewhere when the user clicks on save so now let us go here So now I have employee name and employee ID. When the user clicks on save, I need to get the value of the employee name. So in order to get it, so we need to have a managed bean so that we can have a binding for this component using which we can find the value. So let me quickly go ahead and create a managed bean and then a binding for this component. So I select employee name, go to advanced, go to binding. I click on this, click on edit. So I don't have any bean for it. So I'm just going to create the new bean. So I'm going to provide the name as employee create view bean. So I'm going to create it in page flow scope. So the bean got created. So now I'm going to define the property. So I'm going to say employee name. So now basically if you see whatever value the user enters, it will be there in the page flow scope employee create view bean dot employee name. So when the user clicks on save, we need to set the value in the return parameter which is nothing but the page flow scope dot new employee name in order to do that we will use a set property listener so now let me go back here i use a set property listener on top of it so i'm going to set it on action for from so which is basically going to come from the bean I go here, select the corresponding bean. So this is the bean I have. 
the next one the two value should go to like a two value should be the value that we have defined in the return value I click on this click on expression builder I select new employee name if you guys remember like when we defined the return value so this is what we said will contain the return value so we have mentioned it as page flow scope dot new employee name so now basically what will happen is right the user will put in the name and basically that name will be set to the page flow scope dot new employee name so whatever we have to do from the employee create task flow we have done now let's go back to employee list task flow go and select the employee create if you see here you will see the written values that whatever we have defined in the employee create task flow now inside this whatever value we are getting we can store it in another page flow scope variable so i'm just going to mention it as page flow scope i'll just say employee name so on task flow return when it comes back to this task flow this is the value it will get assigned so the new employee name will be the value that like uh, it is returned this will be assigned to page flow scope dot employee name so once i put it in page flow scope you can use it throughout the task flow so now i put it in page flow scope i go to employee success page so i'm going to say new employee employee name successfully created so basically now I got the value got the written value through the new employee name which is assigned to employee name so we could use page flow scope dot employee name to get the actual return value now let's go ahead and run our application and see if you are able to get the return value So I'm in employee list. I click on create. I use the task flow call activity to navigate to create new employee task flow where it displays the default activity. So now I provide the name. So I provide the name as charge. Then I'm going to provide the ID as 123. Now the moment I click on save, it takes me back to the new employee where like it should have displayed the name of the employee successfully created. I think we did not give the value component that's why it gives the exact same like a, the same rich put, input text now let's go and quickly fix it I go here to the employee create view go to the set property listener we should have done employee name dot value so basically so this is the page flow scope is the scope of the bean this is the name of the bean this is a component binding and dot value will give the actual plate value what we did was we, we didn't mention this dot value that's why what happened it give the entire rich input text out say as a return value that's why it printed something else so now we have mentioned dot value let's see what happens click on create I provide the name so I'm going to do it once again as charge giving the ID as 123 I click on save if you see here it went back to the employee success page where it passed the value from the employee create task flow to the employee list task flow so now I click on list I navigate to the employee list so basically what we have done as part of this series of tutorials on task flow like a call and return activity 
basically what we have seen is like how to call a task flow basically like how to navigate to another task flow using task flow call so that's the first thing that we saw and second thing what that we saw was how to return from the original calling like a return back to the original calling task flow and the third thing that we saw was how to return to the original calling task flow but to a different view and fourth thing that we saw was how to return a value to the original calling task flow and then use that value and display it informatively i hope this tutorial help you to understand the various concepts with respect to the task flow call and return activity do let me know if you have as part of the comments thanks